a young Golden Gloves boxer, junior Olympian. At the age of 19, Jimmy Hiller started plumbing. And in Nashville, Tennessee, at the age of 24, with only $500 in his pocket, he now owns one of the largest independently owned service companies in the country. I'm Craig Morgan. This is American Plumber Stories. Some days I'm working before the sun kisses the sky. I watch the world wake up from the seat of my truck. I'm out here earning my piece of the pie. A good, honest buck. No, it ain't love. I was taught to do the things I do so I don't depend on anyone. I work hard enough through the year so I play whenever I want. I have more than I deserve, including a wife who says I'm hot. Yeah, it's better than a good life that I got. I'm Jimmy Hiller, uh, founder and president of Hiller Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, Electrical. Obviously, I've been blessed in my life. I haven't always felt that way. Obviously, different times, different phases of my life. Well, I would say his story is, is great because it's the American dream, um, what he's been able to accomplish in his life and in his business. Went through treatment, got a divorce, and, and went into business all within about the six-month period of time. I had no money, I had $500 to my name, and I had a drive that I thought, if I worked really, really hard, that I could make it. When they lived up north, they played hockey, they played football, but he was just so small that it was very hard for him to compete. My brother's only 10 months older than me, but he was always a foot taller than me and weighed probably 30, 40 pounds more than me most of his life. Got into boxing because there was a lightweight, you know, it, it was based on your weight. You know, I wound up winning the uh, District Junior Olympics, then went on to the uh, uh, Regional Junior Olympics, got a gold medal there, and then I wound up getting a bronze medal in the National Junior Olympics. So that was the highlight of my, my early career, and then took that on into a high school uh, where you became in the Open Division. I was two-time winner of the so Southern Golden Gloves, and went to the Nationals uh, twice in my life. You know, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield uh, were in the same time that I was. Evander Holyfield and I were actually on the same boxing team. He was fighting out of Atlanta. I was fighting out of Nashville. It was, uh, the Southern Golden Gloves was fought at that time in Knoxville, Tennessee, so we both converged there and then went to the Nationals together. But of course, he became one of the toughest opponents um, for the gym. In, in, in amateur boxing, it's how many points you score. So I did one thing. I went straight from my corner to the other man's corner and I threw as many punches as fast as I possibly could to outpoint the opponent. He was driven very hard and I think he already had that mentality. And as he started to excel in boxing, he just became totally dedicated to that. So they were putting me in the ring with professional boxers Okay, and you're either gonna get really good really quick or you're gonna get beat pretty bad. But he came in third in the Junior Olympics and he probably would have continued, but um, he and his high school girlfriend got pregnant and so everything else had to go and they had to focus on being parents. When I graduated from high school, I started working the very next day I was pumping gas at a, at a gas station. He was trying to earn a living and pay the bills, and a family friend told his father, we need to, to get him into a trade. Father came home and said, hey, Jimmy, what do you think about becoming a plumber? I started my plumbing career in December 1984. January 1985 is the coldest day still today in Nashville history. I'll never forget that because I was working out on these apartments installing plumbing uh, in the new construction world. He just happened to be very, very skilled. He picked up the skills immediately. 
Uh, he would take overtime anytime it was available. If anybody can come in on their day off, if anybody can work late, if anybody can, he was the first volunteer. August 26, 1989, I checked myself into Cumberland Heights uh, alcohol treatment. So I spent 30 days there, came out clean and sober, been clean and sober now 33 years. And you know, within a couple of years and working for a couple of different plumbing companies, that's when he realized, I'm limited. I don't want to be limited. I want to establish my own business. So I started thinking about the future of my life. What was I going to do with the rest of my life? And that's where really the thought process has came in place and at least planning to go in business for myself. Uh, he's a driver, you know, always pushing to get the most out of people. He was of the same mentality. If I'm going to do something, I want to do it 110%. I'd get the word of mouth out from friends and relatives. Hey, can you do this little repipe for us? Can you install this water heater for us? Can you do this? He was struggling so hard to, to run his own business, to build his own business. And all of his relatives and anyone that he knew had told him, you can't do this, Jimmy. My father called me and said, hey, can you meet your Uncle Jimmy and me over at his office? We want to talk to you. Basically, both of them looked me in the eye and said, hey, Jimmy, you need to go find you a job. You've been doing this for, for six months and you haven't made any money. As a matter of fact, we can show you exactly how much money you've lost, and if you talk about the hours that you're putting into it, you're absolutely not making any money. And with tears coming down my eyes, I looked at them both and I said, hey, if I give up now, I'll never have anything in my life. I, I wanted to have custody of my children, so I continued to work. The first time I came to his house, which he was working out of, um, he said, I don't expect much because, you know, there are plumbing parts and stuff and no problem. I mean, we're, we're just buddies. And the first thing I noticed was a toilet sitting right in the middle of the den living area. Well, it, it was 60, 65 bucks, right? I wasn't going to leave it outside in the rain. You brought the $65 toilet inside the house and kept it safe because that $65, that part may have been $300 in an installation. I would say that's one of his best attributes is just his vision and being able to see where he wants to go. Being able to fulfill his vision that he has motivates me every day. Whether it's good or bad, I always knew that whatever I wanted for my family was going to be achieved through the success of this business. And there were many Fridays that I was calling contractors and saying, please, can we get paid today? I've got to meet payroll. And there were times when he didn't take a check and said, we just got to get everybody paid. We both worked extremely hard. She came in early on in the career. I needed somebody in the office to, to watch the, the, the money coming in, the money going out. So for the first probably five years that we were married, I kept my job as a legal secretary downtown and he continued to try to grow his business. At the point that we were married, I think there were only a couple of employees. And he just slowly started to turn things around. So I'm fortunate that my dad poured in his blood, sweat, and tears to, to build a very, very solid foundation for this company. You know, when I look at plumbing today, plumbing is just like the government said, it's essential services. So, so thankful that I was in the plumbing business when the government started shutting down because of the pandemic. This is a necessity that everybody needs. There's been a shortage of tradespeople as long as I can remember. So we said, okay, where, where can we go to find good people? In 2016, Transition to Trades was established so that service members while transitioning would have the opportunity to attend Total Tech so that they can establish themselves in the industry before they even leave the military. I need to know about what is Transition to Trades. Transition to Trades is a joint venture between Hill of Plumbing, Heat and Cool and Electrical, Total Tech School, and the United States military. Getting guys as a transition out of the military to come through school, three trades, plumbing, heat and cooling, and electrical, 
so they can have something to fall on when they get out of the military. One of the things that is special to me about Transition to Trades is a service um, member can transition into a trade where he or she can truly become Superman or Superwoman. There isn't anybody who served in uniform for any amount of time that doesn't understand resupply, discipline, and management. We have values, we have skills that we don't realize, that we don't talk about. Did you think you were gonna be a plumber when you're in the military or do what you do here? Oh, never thought I was gonna be a plumber. Actually, I met an individual at a job fair and he asked me what I did in the military. I told him I was an M1 mechanic. He said, you could be a plumber. I said, M1 mechanic, plumber, how do you get the two together? He said, can you find a fuel leak on your vehicle? Of course I can. Can you fix it? Yes, I can. Do you know how the fuel goes through your vehicle? Yes, you could be a plumber. Wait a second, he just made sense. I gave him my resume. A lot of people go, gee, how's your transition going? Probably the most stressful time of their career when they were getting ready to leave and how they're gonna transition into the civilian world. Whether you serve four or 40 years, transition is a challenging critter. You're getting out of the military, you don't know what you're gonna do, you're getting into something like plumbing, the only thing you know about is that hot's on the left. Taking it from there and blossoming and going to get a career, not a job, just over broke, but a career. That's a beautiful thing. So did you go through that yourself? I sat in this very classroom. I went through this school, right here in the school. It's an ongoing process to teach the commanders about the programs that we have so that we get their support so that they allow their soldiers to not go to work, but to come to the programs. You take off your uniform and, and the first thing you lose is that sense of purpose because you know what you were doing help make the world safer. And so a soldier can really make a good transition into coming to this classroom where they've got very little classroom part and 80% hands-on. I'm stationed at Port Campbell um, about an hour from Nashville. I've been in about three years. I'm transitioning out. So I worked with my dad in high school a little bit and um, he's, a, he's been a plumber for about 30 years and he's like, well, you can't learn plumbing in 20 days, but we've been every day getting after it. Basically what you have here is an efficiency apartment. I've got all my plumbing from a washer and dryer hookup, kitchen sink, lavatory sink, toilet, water heater, all of it here. So the students get to put their hands on it, take it apart, troubleshoot it, put it together, and figure out what's going on with the plumbing. When they go into a house, it's like, They've been there before. Sure, and I have different faucets, I have different toilets, I have different water heaters, so they get to see a variation of them, because if I can fix one, I can fix any of them. How long are they in there, in here, or does it vary each day? It's typically a five hour day, so what you're doing in that day is you're gonna do some classroom, some days there's no classroom, and it's all lab work, because there's a crawl space under there too, so they have to deal with drain lines as well. As you notice, there's no walls here. That's so the instructor can see. You, we do not allow the student to come out backside and stick their hands in there. Because if they're sticking their hands in, you can't do that in Mrs. Jones' house. That's so I can see. It's a good start for transitioning out because you're doing stuff that you, know, you, you want to do with people who have been through what you've been through. Next is move back to Missouri and uh, dad's ready for me. He's, he's getting older and he's wanting to show me more of the trade so I can uh, one day take it over. The soldiers, they have, you know, so many of those foundational pieces that you're looking for in an employee. They know how to show up on time. They know how to, how to wear a uniform. They, they know how to say please and thank you, yes ma'am, yes, y y yes sir. And they know how to follow processes and procedures. It was easy for the commanders to support the soldiers being away from work because it was a short program. Plumbing, well, electrical, and HVAC, they could do one, two, or all three trades. With a 30-day program, the soldiers could have a credential, a skill that they could take with them into their next you know, career. Without this program, you're gonna go get hired and learn on the job. You're gonna make that same mistake two, three times. Here, you've seen it. You've already made that mistake in-house, so you don't make it out there. But y'all do even hire some of these graduates. We hire a lot of graduates through Hiller.
Uh, I'm Paul Zendel. I'm a uh, commercial plumbing technician with Hiller LLC. Born and mostly raised in, in New York State, not the city. Lived in Ohio for a little while, and then Virginia, Pennsylvania, and then back to New York. Um, and I lived there until I joined the Army in 2004. The thought of becoming a plumber of any kind had never occurred to me. This first call for today, according to the notes, we're just supposed to reconnect a uh, refrigerator to the water line for the ice maker. Really simple job. Uh, not a bad way to start the day. I really enjoyed combat arms. And in my position and rank that I was at now, there was no way I was gonna get back to that. In the medical field, because that's what I just spent the last 15 years doing, that interested me, I would have had to go back to college for a minimum four years to make any kind of decent money. You know, back in the day, people only wanted to go get a college degree. And then a lot of times people get jobs and they're not even working in that degree field. But other options exist for veterans who want to learn a technical skill. So why not explore something that can be rewarding, that you're going to stay out of debt. So when you start to out-process the Army, they have all of these job fair sites that kind of come to Fort Campbell. If you want to try welding, you can go ahead and try welding with GI Bill, or you can do this with the GI Bill. So I decided to try the transition trades program. That was a blessing because, like, you're getting paid your full active duty pay, and you're attending a, something that might change your life. 85, 90 percent of our veterans faithfully, selflessly serve four, six, eight, ten years. They then get out of the military. They don't have any retirement benefits, but they have VA benefits that are very significant, but the majority of them don't use them. The impact that I have on helping our men and women figure out what they want to be when they grow up, it's just fun because it's always different. Every day is different. Every soldier is an individual. But when I got towards the end of my contract, I did not know exactly where I was going to end up. So the transition to trades program definitely helped me get stepped in the right direction on all the stuff I wanted to do. I have CEOs who come to me and go, gee, you told me to hire a veteran, I hired a veteran. I saw their work ethic, I saw their discipline, I saw their leadership, I immediately made them a supervisor but I never would have hired them as a supervisor because I didn't realize that they understood the business. I'm a lead tech. Usually if anybody has questions about gas systems, they always come to me and ask. You know, that's, that's how soldiers operate. We don't just accomplish the task, we exceed the standards. They've made the most sales or they're, you know, they're hitting high on the commission charts. They've gotten promoted, they're in their own truck. I left the Army with a job on the table and debt free of school, any kind of school bills. How many people can say that, that are making the level of income that I'm making? The instructors here are previous employees of Hiller. So they have the pull to be able to get me in with somebody on the spot. Let's just say I'm very happy to have had transition to trades. I was panicked for a little bit. And then I found out about it, and it, yeah. For me, that's one of the most uh, rewarding things. So they are used to a certain amount of structure within the military. They know what to expect. Paycheck's coming. Recently, I was honored to be the keynote speaker at one of their graduations and marked the thousandth graduate of, of this program. To have 1,000 soldiers that have graduated that have an opportunity to get into the trades if they choose to take it, that it is just a blessing, that opportunity that we're given to our men and women. We've been blessed once again with all these people coming out of the military. We're getting them trained up th through the Total Tech School and then we're finding them jobs through our network of practicists and contractors across across the nation. My advice to our veterans is look for an organization that you'd be proud to tell people you belong to. Look for an organization that shares your values and your ethics. 
Of course, he wanted the successes, but it's far surpassed anything that he could have ever envisioned. But he, of course, wanted to have something for his children so they didn't have to struggle the way he had to struggle and the way I had to struggle and the way we struggled together. You know, on one hand, I can tell war stories about working in a family business, um, but then on the other hand, it's, it's nice being able to come in every day and be around your family and see your family. He has always had that drive. He still has that drive. Uh, we both just turned 57 this year, and I said, when do you slow down? And he said, I don't know. He said, I, I don't know how to do anything else. If you ran into him on the street, you wouldn't think that this is a guy who uh, owns a company that does $150 million a year in revenue. You think about all the things that happened to me that led me into the plumbing career. You know, I look at those as blessings in my life today. I wish I was nowhere but where I am right now, exactly where I am today because that's where I was designed to be. And uh, I'm blessed to have been, been, been here. I'm Craig Morgan and you've been watching American Plumber Stories. Be sure to go to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button and check out all of our other socials. It's American Plumber Stories.